Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, I want to go and talk to you guys all about some actually kind of interesting news in regards to the brand new PlayStation 5 system. As you guys may have heard throughout the past like week, week and a half or so, we've been having controversy up on both sides on is this brand new revision of the PlayStation 5 actually good, actually bad, is it better, is it worse, is it worth getting, should I be worried, and all that type of stuff. But now as I even said though throughout all those videos we were making, sometimes you just have to wait for just a little bit more research and a little a little bit more people to kind of dive on into this to kind of see a little bit more specific numbers and the one kind of nice thing on this is the fact that a lot of the numbers actually are better in some regards but of course some are actually still worse so in theory it actually might not be that bad and maybe a lot of people might have been blown it out out of a little bit out of proportion to it now even when i made those videos kind of like yeah it can kind of go either way it's probably better just to wait and see so it's kind of like basically the wait and see where it doesn't actually seem that bad so we're gonna talk about a lot of different type of stuff show some numbers show some statistics you guys can probably make your own decision on what you guys want to go do with it so make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on as well for the brand new playstation 5 giveaway amazon links down below for the ps5 disc digital console controller twitter and twitch stream as well link down below sign up for weeble the positive 100 you guys go get free stock and free money coinbase you guys go buy 100 worth of any cryptocurrency you guys go and get free bitcoin there's always link down below leave a like or leave your thoughts and comments down below too as well and let's go and talk about this so like i said uh it was kind of a little bit of doom and gloom there's a little bit of like people kind of calling them on out and it's kind of been like all over the place when it comes to it like i can see both sides because we just don't really have any long-term testing but one major thing i kept on saying in the previous videos is that well sony is a multi-billion dollar company so i'd probably go and trust them in terms of a long-term change up or maybe they like you know just trying to maybe cut some costs but as well i always do want to be skeptical and i just want everyone to always kind of have an open mind because it could be good could be bad we just have to see more research but as i said now we actually have a little bit more research going on over here too so we've actually been seeing articles after articles it's probably gonna be more of like the probably like the weekend vibe i would say for all this stuff so let's go talk about some of this so Number one, we actually have an article on over here. I'm going to get my little camera on over here for you guys so you guys can see my lovely mug. But we basically actually have an article over here and many articles basically stating further testing shows that the new PS5's smaller, lighter heatsink actually does go and keep the console cooler. It was actually very good to go and see. But it's like I said, there's a few numbers that are higher, some numbers that are lower, some charts to look at, and I'll show you guys all of that. But new testing refutes assertions that a smaller heatsink means a hotter console. And now, once again, I still kind of feel like the hotter console does kind of seem like it was on the outside end, which makes sense. I have a few critiques on this, but overall, the testing does look good. So just give you guys a month. So basically, last month, Sony began shipping a lightly revised version of its PlayStation 5 console. We cover this a lot in Japan and also in Australia as of now with a smaller, lighter heatsink and a handful of other tweaks. And this also includes a different Wi-Fi card, the little screw, <laughs> and also the internals you guys can go and see here. A slightly lesser intense uh, heatsink and a few other little various things too as well. An earlier teardown and analysis of the revised PS5 made headlines because it suggested that one of the new PS5 ran warmer than the older one based on the temperature of the air being exhausted from the console. This does make some intuitive sense if you assume that a smaller heat sink will automatically be worse at dissipating heat, but more detailed and precise testing from the YouTubers at Hardware Busters backs up the skepticism of the claim, showing that the PS5 exhaust air is warmer because the new cooling system is doing a better job of removing heat from the console as cooling systems are meant to do. So a few things on this, I'll chime in. The first initial impression on that makes sense. Like a bigger, bigger heat sink usually can go and get more heat on it and dissipate out the heat a little bit better. And if the exhaust is also pushing out more higher heat, that would also make sense too. But the kind of main internal thing that matters is, and same for PCs too, is the GPU, CPU, and at least in this regard, basically like the central drive for the actual console. So the APU, so all that type of stuff. So that's kind of where these numbers get a little more on the interesting side. And while I was kind of even telling people, like, yeah, it's right to be cautious, but also just wait for more information on my previous videos. So basically, the hardware busters testing measured the temperatures of the APU, the memory, the voltage regulator modules, the VRMs, and exhaust while they were playing Devil May Cry 5 or was running on both PS5 models. Now, I do want to go and kind of throw in a little bit more of a critique, and I would actually love if they did this on a somewhat different way. I would love if they were able to go and test this on a proper PlayStation 5 game. 
think Returnal or think Ratchet and Clank, because that's more so where the console is actually customized on, or maybe also compared to more of a general AAA game, such as, say, Call of Duty, because Devil May Cry has actually been a little bit more of an older game out there. Still kind of somewhat graphically intensive, but I would love to see it maybe run on base Call of Duty, because I feel like that would be more of what people are used to, or like a 2K game system too as well. So the exhaust air is actually indeed a few degrees warmer. So the actual initial thought on this was actually not a wrong call. It was actually not wrong on that regard. The new PS on the new PS5 than the old one. But big but, and this is like the big boy information we need over here. On average, the new PS5's APU ran about 11 degrees cooler, dropping from 51 degrees to 40 degrees, which would also make sense too, because if it's trying to dissipate half, uh, heat faster, that means that the heat can't necessarily sit on the APU and overall, it's like the kind of the, the big motherboard of the console. The memory and VRM temperatures in the new PS5 rise a bit. The memory temperatures actually go do go up, which this actually would be concerning. Like this article is very on life. Uh, we don't have to worry about it. I would still say not like a, you shouldn't be worried too, too much, but it's something to keep in mind and kind of consider. And we want to see how it is from like six months from now or one year from now, because a lot of this stuff kind of leads into more so long term issues. Say it's like you have your console for two, three years. The longevity is kind of something you have to worry about. Same with your console overheating long term or even internals melting, stuff like that, you know, over time and time and time. But basically, yeah, the memory has conf confirmed and VRM temperatures in the new PS uh, PS5 do rise a bit. And that also actually could go and uh, technically affect up the actual, like, console playing games. Although I'm sure that's, like, it's just a stretch. If it's, it's, From everything we've kind of seen, it's very, very in that small window. It's probably not that big of a deal, but it can. Like, for someone who's built PCs and does a lot of computer stuff, that actually could have some issues. The memory temperature does go up around to 7 degrees Celsius, and the VRM temperature goes up by about 1.7. So this is kind of what I mean. The VRM going up by 1.3 degrees Celsius, that is nothing. Like that, like, that is not even, like, a contention point at all. But the actual memory temperature going up by 7 degrees Celsius... Now, that's a little bit more on the scarier side. Now, once again, it's not end-all, be-all, but there's something to kind of be, keep a note on that. So, of course, even the article says, but neither increase should have an impact on the console's reliability or longevity. The much larger drop in the APU temperature is worth the trade-off, which I would also agree to as well. I think it's like there is trade-offs here, and I'm sure, and I've said this on my previous videos, I'm sure Sony and their designers and their billions of dollars worth of investments into these things like the PlayStation 5s, I'm sure there's a reason why, and I'm sure long-term there's a why. But it's always nice and good to be skeptical when it comes to this type of stuff. So you also can actually kind of look in the chart over here. We'll have another chart we can show you guys in a second. Let me move my webcam down so you guys can see. You guys can maybe look at like the CPU for the PS5 old. Uh, 51.15 degrees Celsius. CPU in the PS5 new, 40. And now that's huge. Like, I can say stuff about anything about the memory or whatever, but the CPUs usually do run pretty hot. Same with um, computers. So the fact that this is literally 11 degrees Celsius kind of breakdown, that is the... Like, I'm surprised this article is not even mentioning that. That's, like, actually probably a bigger deal than most. The CPU is, like, the main thing, too. It kind of basically makes sure the games can load and good and be fine with that, which is nice. As well, the memory, you guys actually do see the new one, and the memory is a bit hotter. I, once again, would probably rather have a lower CPU than a higher memory. Like, I'm okay with that trade-off. The VRM, though, is also a little bit on the higher side, too. But this is also what I said is, like, it's basically negligible at that point. So close. Like, it's just not over there. And, of course, the exhaust as well is also hotter. But also maybe go and just time into with all the other things mixed in. But I do think this CPU being a lower temperature, phenomenal. Good stuff. Like, I would actually, that's like, I think that'd be the one kicker where I'd be down to go get the new PS5. Because that just seems perfect. Like, I'm actually a-okay with that, too, as well. So all these results, too, when I compare a single old PS5 to a single new PS5, and the numbers might look a little bit different with a larger sample size, which I would actually like to go and see more people test this, more so on different games. I think I'd more so want to see different games on it, proper PS5 games, or also mainstream games like 2K and Call of Duty. I'd want to see that. But it's on the convenience over there, like for all this stuff, the newer, lighter, and PS5 smaller heatsink is not automatically going to result in a hotter, louder, and more failure-prone console, which is all good. Like, it's like not end-all, it's not doom and gloom, and it is kind of nice that we see a little bit more testing kind of coming out from this. The new PS5's model number is a CFI, CFI 1102A, while the original is CFI 1000. Look for these numbers if you want to make sure to get the uh, new revision. So just in case you guys are curious on that, that's also on eBay. And I don't think we've actually seen any of them in America as of yet, but I'm sure if this is actually like a fully like vetted, like they're going to use it, I'm sure we'll see more of that. The Hardware Busters team identified a few other minor differences in the system board with the new revision, but found that almost everything important to keep in the console cool, the number, the type of fans, the fan speed, and the noise level are either identical or nearly identical, which is good. So basically all the good stuff is still saying good and all the bad stuff isn't really there. So it's just awesome to go and see. 
the new PS5 was about one decibel louder, which actually surprisingly on the initial reports, it actually said that it was actually quieter too as well. But I think one decibel isn't that big of a deal. The power consumption under most circumstances was a couple of watts higher. So it is not fully as efficient. So it is a little bit louder. It is a little bit more like usage. But like these like small things are so small that it probably doesn't even matter, which I can completely go and get on that too as well. So all around good news. I'm actually happy seeing this type of stuff. And as well, if you guys just want to see a few more other screenshots, we should have another article over here that kind of went more on the in-depth side. If you guys are curious on this, if you guys just want to screenshot it or pause the video. And so we have the old PS5 CPU, which is extremely high. Kind of the same information we showed you guys over here. And does kind of actually keep on spiking up pretty high. And as well, we also have the new memory, which is also quite high too in comparison. You guys can see all the other stuff stuff is actually very, very similar. The only one thing is that I do think the CPU, once again, I'd rather have a little bit more of a chiller CPU than anything else. So you know what? I'm kind of okay with this. I would still want to wait for a little bit more testing. It's still not here in America too as well. So no major big deal. We'll probably start seeing it maybe around the holidays or such. But overall, good news. I'm happy this is not like us in a doom and gloom situation. And I'm happy a lot of us, if we do get these consoles the next six months, should be pretty happy with it. So give me your thoughts and comments down below as well. And just thanks you guys are subscribed with the notifications on for gaming news, restock news, and all that. As well, I just appreciate you guys all so much for watching. Leave a like if you guys want to. Amazon links down below for the PS5 disc digital console controller. Twitter and Twitch stream as well. Link down below. Sign up for Weeble. Deposit $100. You guys go get free stack and free money. Coinbase, you guys go buy $100 worth of any cryptocurrency. You guys go and get free Bitcoin. I appreciate you guys all so much for watching. And I appreciate you guys all for channel. I'll have a few more videos all throughout today. Hope you guys have a good weekend. Love you guys.